Okay, this is our study guide on section um, unit, excuse me, section unit, um, hopefully you know what I'm talking about, unit 3B, which is what we refer to as the LTF lessons in section 4.9 out of our book. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is talking about composing functions. Remember that's when we take the results of one function and apply it to another function. But we always start off with making sure you can actually read the functions. So f of 3 means I'm going to go to my f function and I'm going to find out this is what my x value is. So I go find 3 on my x-axis and I go up and I find out that that is 1 on the y-axis. So f of 3 is 1. g of 0 means I'm going to go to 0 on my x-axis and I'm going to go find my graph and I find out that my graph value is negative 3. So g of 0 is negative 3. Now, this is when we actually get into the composing or the composition of functions. So f of g of 1, and if I give you that inside number, that means you start with the inside function. So g of 1 means I go to 1 on the x-axis, because that's my x value, and I go down to my function or wherever my function is and find out that that is negative 1. So that means I'm going to be figuring out g of 1 is negative 1, so what's f of negative 1? And I go to negative 1 on the x-axis for f and I find out that my the value of my function is negative 2. So f of g of 1 is negative 2. Now we have g of f of 1. Again we start on the inside so on my f graph, I'm going to where x is 1. On the x-axis, x is 1. And what is that y value? Right there, that y value is actually 1 half. So that means I need to go figure out g of 1 half because f of 1 was equal to 1 half. So if I go to 1 half on my x-axis for g, I go down and find out that my graph is at negative 2. So that answer is negative 2 also. Uh, f of g of negative 1, again, starting with the inside, g of negative 1, oh, I can't go to negative 1 on g because it's not defined. So this answer would be undefined. Undefined. Sounds funny when I say it. <laughs> g of f of 2, starting again, got the inside, start the inside, so I go to 2 on my f function and that's 0. So g of 0 means I go to 0 and I find out that my function is at negative 3. So this gives me a value of negative 3. Um, then I have g of f of 4. So f of 4 I'm again starting on the inside on the x-axis where f is 4. And that's x-axis 4. Go up to my function and find out that it's equal to 2. So f of 4 equals 2. But now I have to go find out what g of 2 is. So I go to 2 on my x-axis and my function g is at 1. So this answer is 1. This says when does f of g of x equal 2? So y'all, this is the outside number. We didn't give you the inside number this time, so you start on the outside. And you need to find out when does f equal 2. And it's the y value, so I'm going to go on the y-axis to 2 and find out that it equals 2 right here and it equals 2 right there. So that means the inside part, g of x, has to equal that number. Oh, wait, what's the g of x? If at f equals 2, then I'm going to find out where g of x equals negative 3 or g of x equals 4. Because what I'm doing is if g of x equals negative 3, then I'll put it in for negative 3, and f of negative 3 gives me 2. Same thing with the 4. So I'm going to go to my function, and where is negative 3 on my y? And that means the x value is 0. So 0 is there. Then I go to 4 on my y-axis and I look across and there isn't anything. Um, if I didn't have zero right there I would write undefined at this point but because I actually have a value then it's only 
true and it is true when x equals zero and that's what it asked okay this next one can g of f of x equal three again i'm looking for where does the g function equal three and i go up to three and i look across and it's never equal to that the question says can it so your answer is yes or no and if it's undefined then your answer is going to be no I don't even ask you to find what it is. You just have to say yes or no at this point. <clears throat> okay. Can f of g of x equal 3? So I'm going to go back and see. Can f equal 3? I go up to 3, and I look both ways, and I see my graph is right here. And that value is at 5. So that means that f equals 3 when g of x is equal to 5. So then I go to y axis of 5 and I hope you all can see that it can't it can never be 5 g of x can't be 5 so the answer to that question is no alright so that's reading your composition of functions let's look at actually graphing them so when you graph them okay we did this little compact table okay and how do we figure out what numbers to put in here how to do this okay we always start off by picking x values and then we figure out what to plug in remember that we always start off with what's on the inside so that's what I'm gonna put it into first and then I'm gonna have a final output but that's taking x putting it into G getting the results of G and plugging it into F and getting a final answer okay so I'm picking an x value G is my blue graph, so I'm going to go find, well, there's 2, 0. So when X is 2, G is 0. So that means I'm having trouble with my, um, my lovely, oh, no. I don't know what happened. Okay, I think I know. All right, I'm going to pause for a second because I'm having some technical issues. I'll be right back. Okay, let's see if that worked. So if I put in 2 g was 0 and then now that is the new x that I'm plugging in for f so I go to x equals 0 and what does f equal to and f equals 2 okay so I'm gonna go pick another one I pick 4 and find out that my blue graph is equal to 4 so I have 4 and I have 4 and now I go plug in 4 and my green graph is 4 also um, and just to make sure, y'all, I always ask you to find three points because if I have a line and I have a line, then this graph over here is going to be a line. And therefore, if you do three of them, you will know that you have it correct if they make a line. But if you have two, you could have made a little careless mistake and mess up the whole problem. So I don't want you to do that. So let's pick another one. Uh, I'm going to pick zero, and my G graph goes down to negative four. So zero, negative four. And I go to negative 4, and I find out that that's 0. And remember, when we need to plot this, okay, I'm going to plot the very first input and the very last output. So that was just something we used to help us get some values, but that's not what I'm going to use to actually graph. So I'm going to graph the point 2, 2, and 4, 4, that's a bad dot, sorry, and 0, 0. But that's enough, whether you look at it here or when we graph this line. Let's see how uh, I'm going to graph, put some arrows on my line, and I'm going to make it match what I'm drawing. And I can tell you that it's going to go through like this. So that should be enough to answer the question, are these two inverses? Yes, they are inverses. Justify your answer because y equals x. That's all you have to say. You can see it right here. y equals x every time. Okay, this is my y value. That's my x value. Or you can look at the graph and see that it goes through and it has to look exactly like that. So let's look at the next one. Okay. Similar problem. Okay. But pay attention. Okay, just because I want to solidify and make sure you understand. I switched that. It doesn't say f of g of x this time, it says g of f of x. So that means I always start off with x, but I'm going to start off with the inside this time. So I start off with f, and then I'm going to go to g. 
So, what points you want to pick, you look at your graph, um, and I'm looking to find it on the green line this time. That's my F. So, I, let's see, if I go to zero, F is four. Okay, that's my F. So, zero, four. And then I'm going to go over to four on the X axis and find out that G is equal to two. All right, um, let me find another one. I got six, six. If I put six, I get six, and I actually get six on both lines, so I've got that one. And remember, we always want to find more than one. I mean, excuse me, more than two. That is more than one. Um, so I'm going to find another one, and I'm going to go with um, this one right here, which is three. And three, I go to F first, and F is equal to, uh, that's five. So at three, F equals five. So then I go to five and I find out that my G is equal to four. Okay, so again, we plot the first input and the last output. So I'm going to plot, I have zero, two, I have six, six, and I have the point three, four, which is right here. So that's enough. I go up two over three, up two over three to continue this because I told you it was going to be a line up two over three or down two over three, and you can continue. Okay, and, and you are asked to graph the line, so you do need to continue and fill up the graph, so I'm showing you how to do that. And then when I graph this one, I'll go with that color. Uh, looks something like that. So, is that enough to tell you? Are these two inverses? No, they are not. And you don't need to say anything else except for why does not equal x. And y'all, some people are giving me other definitions or other explanations, and that's fine as long as it's accurate. Okay, but but when it's not accurate, then I have to count it wrong. So, um, it, specifically, y equals x. If you want to say it doesn't match the parent linear function, that's fine. But sometimes people are putting other things in there that are messing things up, and I don't want y'all to get it wrong. Okay, the next thing we have to talk about is how to um, determine whether or not they're inverses. And what we talked about in doing that was showing that f of g of x was that equal to x. And we also have to test g of f of x. Is that equal to x? So f of g of x is, f of g of x is 1 third x minus 7 thirds. And F says, whatever you have, okay, 3 times whatever you have in parentheses plus 7. And what's in my parentheses? It is 1 third X minus 7 thirds. And then you have to distribute the 3. So this is, you're doing an algebraic proof, y'all, and it's really important that you show me these steps. So 3 times 1 third is X. 3 times 7 thirds is 7 plus 7, and of course, negative 7 and 7. All right, this side gave me x is equal to x. Let's look at this one. So that's g of f of x, and f of x is this. And g says 1 third of whatever you have in parentheses minus 7 thirds. So when you're, if you have any trouble with this, and you've got G, write the rule down like that. Don't put X in there, just put parentheses. And then go above to find out what you put in that parentheses. One-third times three is one X. One-third times seven is seven-thirds. And seven-thirds minus seven-thirds is zero, leaving me with X equals X. So if I get X equal to X, then my answer is yes. Okay, let's look at another example. Doing the same thing, f of x, uh, actually, f of g of x, does that equal x? So f of 1 fourth x minus 5 fourths, 
All right, does that equal x? We're still looking, so then f says 4 times x. So don't add an x there. This is your x minus 5, and that is 1 fourth x minus 5 fourths. So 4 times 1 fourth x is just x. 4 times 5 fourths is, well, it's not, it's 5. And then I carry down my minus 5. And I have some people fudging this to make it say x, but that doesn't say x. That says x minus 10. That does not equal x. Okay, but to make sure that I didn't make a mistake, all right, it doesn't, so the answer up here should be no. But let's make sure I didn't make a mistake, so I'm going to go g of f of x. Does that equal x? And f of x is equal to 4x minus 5. And G says 1 fourth of X minus 5 fourths. And what is my X value that I have up here? It is 4X minus 5. 1 fourth of 4X is X. 1 fourth of 5 is 5 fourths. Minus the 5 fourths, carry it down. So I'm just doing the algebra. And that's X minus 10 eighths. Do these two have to be the same? No, it doesn't matter what they are. The whole point is it has to equal x. And since it doesn't, then I know that we have done this correctly and these two functions are not inverses of each other. Okay? All right, moving on to solving our equations graphically and then algebraically. And I think you know by now that we're trying to get the same thing on both sides. All right, so on this particular one, this is of the form y equals mx plus b. So I start at negative 4, and I go up 3 over 1. Oh, no, not over 1. Funny. Over 5. Up 3 over 5. Up 3 over 5. Or I go down. I didn't go up 3. Up 3. 1, 2, 3 over 5. 1, 2, 3 over 5. Then I have 1, 2, 3 over 5. 1, 2, 3 over 5. So my line is going to look like this. Boom, boom, boom. Didn't get it. And let's go with that green. So then when I connect them, looking like this. Looks pretty good. All right, and then I'm going to go to the other side, okay? This is a line that's of that form, y equals m times x minus h plus k. So when we graph that one, y'all, that's when we get to start at the point h, k. h is 5, and k is negative 1. So I'm going to go 5, ooh, how nice is that? 5, negative 1, and then my slope is negative 2. So I'm going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, same thing, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So I'm going to continue that because we were told to solve by graphing, but we did find that. And remember, solve by graphing means find that point of intersection. So I have my line, and I put arrows on my line, and I give it a nice color, and I connect them. So now I have to go through and prove algebraically what I'm going to write in the answer blank. And what I'm going to write in the answer blank is, are there any y's in that? There are no y variables in there, so all I care about is the x variable. So x equals 5. Now let's go solve that algebraically and see what happens. I have 3 fifths x minus 4 equals negative 2 times x minus 5 minus 1. Uh, I'm going to clean that up before I get rid of the fractions. So I'm going to write 3 fifths x minus 4. Distribute this negative 2x plus 10 minus 1. Uh, again, 3 fifths x minus 4 equals negative 2x plus 9. Um, you can go ahead right now and get rid of the fraction, or you can move the 4 over. Um, I'll go ahead and move the 4 over. It might make some people happy. 
3 fifths x equals negative 2x. To bring it over, I have to add 4, so that's plus 13. And some people handle adding those fractions just fine. But when I have to combine the x's, some people don't. So you can get rid of the fraction here. I didn't do anything with it. I just carried it through the problem. But when I multiply it by 5, remember, it cancels out over here, leaving me with 3x. And I distribute it on this side to that and to that. So that gives me minus 10x plus 65. I'm going to add 10x to both sides, giving me 13x equals 65 and then divide both sides by 13 and I get x equal to 5. So I can't encourage you enough y'all these two things gotta match. It's a great thing to let you know whether or not you're doing these problems correctly. Um, and I would say that most of y'all um, your graphing is top-notch. So if you're having a little trouble with the algebra come see me but um, that would be what's um, tripping some people up. Alright let's look at this next one. If we graph uh, this is our absolute value function because that's absolute value so that's going to look like the V that we've talked about and minus 1 moves it to the right and plus 2 moves it up so I go to the right 1 and up 2 and then I have a slope of 1 so positive 1 plus or minus 1 excuse me so I'm going up 1 over 1 just to the end of my graph so I know where to put my ruler up one over one this way is going to put me right here. So now when I draw to connect these I'm going to look like this. So I have my V this way and I have my V that way. And then I have the equation of of um, y equals negative 3 okay and pretty much all y'all have that down okay y equals negative 3 is a line and what kind of line is it I think you already know it's a horizontal line through negative 3 so it's looking like this I'm going to have to go from this side because of that thing in my way so you know that doesn't intersect okay so if these two things don't intersect then what are you supposed to put in the answer blank you don't write don't intersect you write that there is no solution because there's no x value that I can put in here that would satisfy the equation and when I come over here to solve it x minus 1 absolute value of x minus 1 plus 2 equals negative 3 and I subtract 2 I get negative 5 and this can't be negative so that's why there is no solution okay the next one we have brings in 4.9 into our LTF lessons and shows you how everything connects so we have y equals x squared minus 1 so when you're graphing this one you got that x squared I hope you know that dings in your head that that's the parabola okay a is positive so I know it's going up and this one, just like one that will be on the test, factors to a PST that we've talked about. And that makes it easy to graph because that's in your vertex form. Y equals A times X minus H quantity squared plus K. So this makes my vertex H, K. So it's 1, 0 because there's nothing else there. And my A value is 1. And if my A value is 1, I just get to use these numbers of 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9 to graph this. So when I graph it, I'm going to have, uh, oh, I can't finish graphing, 1, 0. And then I'm going to go over 1, up 1 in both directions. Back to my vertex, over 2, up 4. 4 in both directions. Back to my vertex, over 3, up 9. Okay, this is an equation, so I'm going to do my best to make it look like a parabola. Okay, so clearly I missed that point, but uh, yeah. 
half, something like that. Okay? Um, all right, so then we do the next one. Y equals negative X plus 3. That's that same Y equals MX plus B that you've been doing since Algebra 1. I start at 3, and I go a slope of negative 1. So down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. There's my point right there. <clears throat> down 1, over 1. I'm going to go in the opposite direction now. If I kept going, you know, y'all got the idea. And if I go up 1 over 1, I'm right here. So there's my other point. Do I have a y value in my original problem? I do. So that means you actually have to give me both coordinates of the point. So this is 2, 1. And this is negative 1, 4. Now, we're going to go solve that algebraically. Oh, I didn't finish graphing, excuse me. Let me go finish that. I wouldn't want it to be incomplete, and because you were told to solve, so you got you got to actually graph it. So, come on. Uh, arrows, and this time I made it pink. So, it's going to look something like this. There we go. So, that's what your graph should look like. And now I'm going to go solve it. So when we solve these kind, we set them equal to each other. So we did negative x plus 3 equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. And we have to bring everything to one side because it's a quadratic equation. So x squared, I'm going to add x to negative 2x gives me minus x. I subtract 3 from 1 and I get minus 2. So this, I'm hoping it's going to factor. So are there any factors of 2 that subtract to give me 1? And there are. That's x minus 2 and x plus 1. So I've got that down, and I set each factor equal to 0. x minus 2 equals 0. x plus 1 equals 0. So x equals 2 or x equals negative 1. Well, that was kind of weird. Um, x equals negative 1. And remember, i got to go plug it back in to get the y coordinate. So I say y equals negative x plus 3. Well, that gave me negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Ooh, look at that. There's my point 2, 1. And then I have y equals negative, always going to put in parentheses around that negative sign, plus 3, and negative negative 1, or the opposite of negative 1 is 1, plus 3 is 4, so I hope my other point is negative 1, 4, and it is, so we're good with that. Alright, let's look at some algebra on the next page. Okay, so we are solving systems algebraically again, and this time... We did one already in number 14 where you graphed it right next to the solution, and this time you're not having to graph it, okay? And when we talked about these in class, we did talk about you're looking at it and get some idea of what it was. This is a squared, so we know that it was a parabola going up, and this is a line with a positive slope, okay? We solve them by setting them equal to each other. That's what we did before, 2x plus 10 equals x squared plus 10x plus 1. And we have to, it's a quadratic, so I have to get everything to one side. So I'm taking all of this to the other side. Uh, no x squared change. 10x minus 2x is 8x. And 1 minus 10 is minus 9. So this comes to a quadratic that we hope factors, and I'm telling you right now, when you get down to one, um, well, let's try and factor it. So we have the factors of nine that subtract to give us eight. So I'm hoping you see that that is uh, nine and one. That gives me plus nine X minus one X. So there's my positive eight X. I set each factor equal to zero x plus 9 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, x equals negative 9, x equals 1, 
And then we gotta go plug it back in. So I'm going to plug it into which one I think is easier, which is your 2x plus 10, y equals 2x plus 10. So I plug that in, y equals 2, my x is negative 9 plus 10. And so y equals negative 18 plus 10 is negative 8. And y equals 2 times 1 plus 10. And that, of course, gives me y equals 12. So as we have talked about before, these two numbers go together in an ordered pair, and those go together in an ordered pair. So our answer is negative 9, negative 8, and 1, comma, 12. Okay. So moving right along. Um, another one, again, we're going to start off by setting it equal to zero. I mean, excuse me, setting them equal to each other. So I have negative x squared plus 2x equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. So again, I don't want a negative x squared, so I'm going to take everything to that side again. So I have zero. I'm going to add x squared. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. 6x minus 2x is minus 4x plus 5. Okay. Again, I'm trying to factor um, because we're going to give you one that factors. If it doesn't factor, it won't factor. You won't need to use the quadratic formula or completing the square is what I'm trying to get at there. So I'm looking for the factors of 10 that add to give me 4. And I can't think that there are any. So just to be sure, what I'm telling you, what I think the easiest thing to do is an acceptable thing for you to do, is that I don't think it factors. So I'm going to go do b squared minus 4ac. My b is negative 4. My a is 2. My c is 5. So that's 16 minus 40. And that is a negative number. That is, what does that equal? Negative... 34? Nope, 24. Negative 24. Okay? That's a negative number, which is enough to tell you that there are no solutions. Okay? If you want full credit for the problem, you cannot stop here and tell me no solution or stop period. Or even if you graph it, you have to do something to show me why you know there's no solution. Okay? Alright, last two problems. And we will be done. Oopsie. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. I didn't mean to do that either. Okay. So, back to my problem. Uh, y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. So, that is a PST that factors to x not minus 4. Come on. Yep. x minus 2 squared. So, my vertex is 2, 0, and a equals 1. So, I know that I'm going to go 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 9. I also know that this line will be dotted because it's not equal to here. So I'm going to go graph 2, 0. And I'm going to go over 1, up 1 in both directions. Over 2, up 4 in both directions. And there's my y-intercept, and that's my y-intercept, so we're good. Over 3, up 9 in both directions. And I just said it's dotted, so I'm going to make it dotted. Bad dotted, but y'all good. And I draw arrows so that I can clearly know what's going to be shaded. So y is less than. That means I go to my body intercept and I shade less than, which means this is going to be outside of this parabola. Okay? All right, now I'm going to go graph the other one. This is negative 3x squared plus 6. That is already in y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. We've talked about that. That's x squared moved up 6. So that means my vertex is at 0, 6. My a is negative 3. So that changes all these numbers, and I'm going to multiply them all by negative 3. So 1 times negative 3. 3 times negative 3, and 9 times negative 3. 
So, I'm going to go plot my vertex of 0, 6. And when I go over 1, I'm going to go down 3 in both directions. When I go over 2, I'm going to go down 9 in both directions. And the next one is off my graph, so I'm just not going to cross that next line. And it is solid. So, it's a skinny graph and it's kind of hard. I think that was pretty bad. Go here. Go. There we go. Okay. So, it's looking like that. And Y is less than. So, I go to my Y intercept and I shade below it, which is going to be inside my parabola here. So, I'm hoping that y'all can tell that the solution here will be this right here that doesn't include. It's not the overlap. Well, you're supposed to say inside the green lines. But y'all will do a better job with your pencil and paper than I do. Okay? <laughs> so that is the solution there. All right, last problem. Again, another PST. X minus 1 quantity squared. Vertex is going to be 1, 0. We always take the opposite of the inside. A is equal to 1, so I get to use these same points. So 1, 0, over 1, up 1. Ooh, there's my y intercept again. Boom, checks out. Over 2, up 4 in both directions. From my vertex, over 3, up 9 in both directions. So uh, it is dotted, so let's, I mean, excuse me, it's solid. And that was what I was drawing. Not very well, but you, y'all are so good and forgiving of my bad drawings. Y is greater than, so I go to my Y intercept and I'm going to shade greater than, so that means I'm inside this parabola. All right, now I got to graph this next one. That one's a bit yucky, but I'm going to keep going. So I have to do negative B over 2A. So if I do negative B over 2A, because that was the other way we talked about finding the vertex. Negative B over 2 times neg uh, 2A. That's negative 8 over negative 4, which is 2. And then you plug 2 in here. And when you plug 2 in here, you find out that the Y coordinate will be 6. And A is equal to negative 2. So my points are like the ones that we have in purple. X is, oh, y'all. Look at that. <clears throat> it's been a long day. That's supposed to be a 3. That's what I graphed. Okay. 1, 2, 3. And then on the other side, I multiply those. Oh, that's what I did. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry, y'all. That should be the 4. Y'all know that. 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. 1, 2, 3, 1, 4, 9. So, I didn't do that. That means that number should be a 12. I'm going to fix it on here, um, which means it would go down further. So that point goes down to here. Oh, look, I graphed that point. Okay, not this one right here. All right. You don't know what to do. If you got any questions, come see me. The hard copy will be right. So I'm multiplying these 1, 4, 9 by negative 2. So that's negative 2, and 4 times negative 2, and 9 times negative 2. So I'm graphing my point 2, 6, and then I go, if I go over 1, I go down 2 in both directions, over 1, down 2. If I go over 2, I'm going to go down 8 in both directions. Oh, y-intercept matches. We're doing it correctly. Okay, and if I go over 3, I go down 18, which is off my graph. This one is dotted. So I'm going to dot him. Make him look like a parabola. Okay. And I'm going to shade less than. So this time it's inside, because that's less than. And so this happens to be the overlap of the two parabolas. So when I shade them, actually that's what I should have done to begin with, is use my pen. That would help me stay in the lines. I was using my mouse before, and that's why I couldn't stay in the lines. Okay? So that is the overlap of that region, and that is the end of that study guide. 
I apologize for that, but I, I know y'all are so familiar that that did not mess anybody up. If it did, please come see me and it'll be right on the hard copy. Email me, come see me if you have any questions. Thank you. Do well.